Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. We've been talking quite a bit about different types of printers on this YouTube channel recently and I've covered what white toner printing is, reviewed a white toner printer, and showed you how to use one. However, white toner printers can be very, very expensive. So I thought today, why not take a standard laser jet printer that would be like a home printer and add a white toner cartridge to it and show you how you can get prints that are white toner prints to put on things like shirts with this standard home printer. Now this means that this standard home printer can be a regular printer as well. And then you can also print on special film to get those white toner prints to add on fabrics and so much more. So there's so much that you can do with white toner printing. Fabrics is one example that I'm gonna use in this video, but you can use different papers for different surfaces from hard surfaces and I've even used it on Mylar balloons on this YouTube channel. So the magic behind this is the white toner cartridge. Now I'm gonna use the absolute white toner cartridge and I'm gonna use a specific laser printer. So what you would do is, if you have a color laser printer at home or if you purchase one, you would find the absolute white cartridge that goes with that printer type. Now there are not cartridges for every single laser printer on the market. So if you really wanna use white toner in your laser jet printer, then you'll wanna look at the website. I'm gonna have links in the description below this video. So head to the website, look for the absolute white toner cartridge and all the different printers that they have cartridges that fit. Then you can match your printer with the white toner cartridge and do what I'm gonna do in this video. And that includes printing on film to make a print to put on a shirt. And I'm also gonna show you that you could just use this to print on cardstock. So if you've ever wanted to print on say craft paper to make something for your home, print invitations, and you wanna print with white, you can now print with white with your laser printer with the absolute white toner cartridge. So the first thing you need to understand is that this cartridge will come with a software license key. So there is software that goes with this because it is gonna take your image and divide it up into sections. So you're going to print twice with this cartridge. You are going to print once with color and then once with the white installed. You're gonna remove the black from this printer and add the white when you're ready to print that white layer. The process itself of changing the cartridges out is very, very simple. The only thing I will say with this, it's sort of like a printer conversion, right? So this is a regular printer. We're sort of converting it to be able to print with white. The only thing I'll say is with any printer conversion, you often have to do a few extra steps. In this case, we need to change the cartridge out. We need to print twice. And that means you can have alignment issues with your print. You can have color issues because you are asking this printer to do something that it's not intended to do. So you may need to play with this more than you would an out of the box white toner printer. So while this is a great budget friendly option to get into white toner printing and to give it a try, it will not give you the exact same results as a traditional white toner printer. However, to get started, to learn more about white toner printing, to give it a try for yourself at home with minimal cost, this is definitely the way to go. And I will say that this absolute white toner cartridge is not cheap, but I would look at the number of prints you get out of it because I do feel like once you look at the number of prints that you will get, the cost per print is rather low. But the investment cost itself, you get the cartridge as well as the software. So there is an investment into the cartridge itself. And then of course you'll need the printer. So I am using a Canon printer and I ordered it off Amazon. And this printer was less than $300 when I found it. I think it was on sale, but you can find affordable printers to do this with. What kind of printer do you need? This needs to be a laser printer or a toner based printer. And like I said, if you want to use this method and use the absolute white toner cartridges, you will need to look at the website and find the, both the brand name and the model number and make sure they have a cartridge that fits your printer. So that's what I did. I just went to the website and found a Canon printer that would work. That was pretty affordable. So I was looking for an affordable option in a Canon printer that was readily available at a place like Amazon and I found it with this printer. Now I will link to the exact printer that I'm using in the description below this video, but know that you don't have to have exactly that printer. If you have say a laser printer at home 
or a way to get one at an affordable price, you can check and see if the iColor website has an absolute white cartridge that will work with that specific printer. So now that we know what kind of printer we need, we have the super special cartridge that is gonna make all of this possible. Now all that's left to do is to start printing on this printer. You probably already have your printer set up. If you don't follow all instructions for setting your printer up, that come with it. So you do wanna get the printer completely set up with the cartridges that come with it. So it probably comes with CMYK. So that's blue, magenta, yellow, and black. You wanna set it up with those cartridges installed. Then you want to open your absolute white cartridge and there will be a key on the inside. So you go to the website, you download the RIP software and use that key to activate it. Once you have that RIP software installed, we are ready to take an image and convert it into something that can be printed with this absolute white toner cartridge. So let's take a look inside of the software first at how to convert those images for printing. This is the absolute white rip software. You do get it when you purchase an absolute white cartridge and your verification code will be inside of the box when you open your cartridge. You'll download this software and then verify it. Now let's go ahead and print something out with this software and take a look at how the software works. The first button we're gonna use is the top left and that is to upload our design. There will be some sample files that come with your download. However, you can also search your computer itself and find the file that you wanna use. You can upload JPEG, Photoshop documents, ping documents, bitmaps, TIFFs, basically any type of file format that is an image. You can even upload PDF files. I am using this lion head as my example project and I will have this file available for free in the description below this video. So you can head there if you would like to get this file. Down the right hand side are things to alter your graphic itself. You can click the top button to expand the file to fit the entire sheet. Now when you hit this, you can actually remove the blank space from your graphic. And if you click yes, it's gonna remove this blank space around the edges and crop your graphic a little tighter. So it'll remove that blank space and then blow it up as large as you can get it. Now you do wanna make sure that your paper size is actually the paper size you're using in your printer. So you can see right now, my paper size is set to eight and a half by 11. However, I'm using an A4 paper size. So click the select a size button and I can pick the A4 paper size. There are several paper sizes already preloaded. You do wanna make sure that your printer will handle the paper size before you pick it. And if you have a special paper size, you can always add it with the plus button. So I'm gonna click the green check to accept that. And now I have the A4 paper size and my print is sized to that maximum size. Now I don't want it to be too close to the edges here. So you can grab the handles in the corners and you can resize this graphic as needed. So I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And you can see the size. So the graphic right now is 7.55 inches by 8.71 inches. If you needed to rotate the graphic, you can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise using these buttons. You can also rotate it a custom amount with the next button. You can flip the image either horizontally or vertically using the next two buttons. However, when you print using this rip, it will automatically mirror it in order to print it. So the only time you would need to flip it is if you did not want it to be mirrored when you printed it. You can use the bottom two buttons to center the image both horizontally and vertically on your paper. Across the top, I can hit the first button to see the original graphic. I can do a print preview and that will turn the background black and that black area will actually be clear on my film. And then I can also display the white layer as well as the color layer. What's going to happen is when I export this, it's going to export as two PDFs both the color and the white layer. So let's go ahead and export this as one option. So we're gonna generate PDF. You can decide where to save it here. Now an overprint is what we want for white toner printing. That is going to print white over the top of the regular print. If you were printing on something like black cardstock, you might wanna underprint, and you can change that here before you export it. These shifts should only be used if your printer is slightly off. Because we're gonna be running this through the printer twice, the printer may shift slightly, and so you may need to shift that white layer in order to allow for that shift. If you need to do that, you can adjust the shift here using the arrow buttons to increase or decrease the shift. I'm gonna do no shift for this example, and I can add that later if I need to. So now we're gonna click Create PDF. Once that PDF is created, we'll click OK. Wherever we save that PDF on our computer, it will now open up. You will see a color layer, and you will see what is going to be your white layer. Now, don't get confused here, it looks black, but we're gonna change those cartridges out 
So everything that is black will print white. So now we have our two sheets ready to print. If you are printing this on a black shirt, you might want to remove the black from the print itself and not print that. Actually use the black from the shirt to show through the image. In order to do that, we can click the image, click configure white generation, and we can remove the black. Now you can adjust the sensitivity here and you may find that you need more or less, but going with the default is always a good option to start. There are several more options here that you can use to adjust your white. Now it is recommended that you stick with the defaults unless you need to tweak those. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and exit. And now you can see what my image looked like when I imported it. That's my white layer at this point. And this is my color layer. So I think I wanna go back to white generation and I want to decrease the sensitivity. Click save and exit. Now we see the white layer as well as the black layer. And you can see what effect decreasing that sensitivity had. And we can click and increase the sensitivity, save and exit, and we'll see the full print preview image, the white layer, and the black layer. I am liking the increased sensitivity a bit better. I ended up going with a 70 on the sensitivity, and we're gonna try that for this example print. One more thing you can use is rasterization. So what rasterization does is it puts holes throughout your image and this can often be used for large images to help the feel of the product when it's on the shirt. This is a more advanced technique and I'm not gonna cover it in this video. The other buttons on the left include the delete button where you can remove the image from your canvas as well as the program settings. Generally, you can leave all of these values at the default. The only thing I wanted to point out on here is the color layer generation. So you can either use CMYK to make your color layers and change the cartridges out between prints, or you can use CMYW that will use a mixture of colors to make your black. Now, this might not always be supported, so using the CMYK would be a safer option, but you can definitely experiment with using the CMYW. Then for the version that we removed the black, I'll go ahead and export the PDF file. When I do that, you can see the version with the colors will not have any black in it because we are gonna put it on that black shirt. And then the white layer, again, this is where we will print with white. So everything that is black will print with white. Now we have that image and we are ready to print on to our printer. So let's take a look at these special things that you need to know about printing on the printer itself. So now that you're ready to print, you wanna add your A paper to your printer. Now you're gonna print on the rough side of this paper and it is gonna depend on your printer. Mine is rough side up in this case. However, it's gonna depend on your printer how you'll add it in. Went ahead and added that A film to my printer. And the first print, I'm gonna print that first page only. And this one uses all the colors, including black. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that black toner cartridge in. So go ahead and print the first page only. Then I'm going to add that paper back to the printer in the same orientation. So you wanna make sure it's in the same orientation. Again, rough side up. And I wanna make sure my lion head is facing the correct direction when I add this back to the tray. Then we're gonna open up the printer and change out that cartridge. So I'm gonna remove the black cartridge. and I'm gonna add the absolute white cartridge into its place. This is very simple. Just as simple as lifting one out and adding the other. You just have to remember to do this step before you print your second page. Then we're gonna go ahead and print that second page, which looks all black on our screen, remember. However, it's going to pull from the white cartridge in this case, because we've added the white in place of the black inside of the printer. You do wanna make sure all of your print settings remain consistent, because the last thing you wanna do is resize at this point and have a different size on your white than was on your color print. Then we're gonna run that same A paper through the printer once again, and this is adding white over the top of that color layer. Any place that our print is white, it's going to show through to the front. In other areas, it's just gonna kind of brighten those colors up. And you can really see those colors start to pop at this point. Now you can repeat the same process with that version that we made that removed black. This time we print on the A paper first, and it looks a little different because there's no black involved. Then I went ahead and added my white toner cartridge into place and print it again. Again, it's going to print over the top of that, add white to it, and some white over those other colors to make them pop. Now these prints look way different. So let's take a look at the prints themselves before we do anything else. Let's look at just some printing results before pressing. This was the print the first time I ran it through. So this is just with colors, no white. Changed it out, added the white toner cartridge, 
and ran this print back through or a similar print back through and it changes to this version. So you can see it pops off more and it adds that white. Looking from the back, you can see this is all color and then it adds white. This is what the RIP software does for you, adding that white to the back. Now, when I did this same version and removed the black, so you can see this has a ton of black in it. If I was to put this on a black garment, I wouldn't necessarily need all these black areas. When I remove the black, my final result looks something like this. So this is with the white. So this is a comparison of what it looked like with the black and without. And you can see there's really just nothing behind it, but it does have that white overlay. Now for an example, I have a piece of black fabric here. And if I lay that on that black fabric, you can see that the black fabric shows through and I get close to this print that I had before without actually using any of my black toner. So knocking out black is a great way to save on product as well as get a better feeling shirt. So now these prints are not ready to press yet. We do have to do a few more steps. So let's head to the heat press, do those steps, and then add this version to a shirt. So I did wanna note that I printed on the eye color paper, just the standard paper. It's a two-step paper for textiles. I will link to the specific paper that I printed on below. Now I will say that there are a variety of papers that you could use depending on the look you want, what you're putting it on. There are a variety of white toner papers on the market. Any of those should work with the methods that I showed you. However, again, you might have to dial in your settings for each specific paper. And when you make any changes, it might feed differently. You might have to use those arrows to bump your print left and right or up and down to get it to line up once you print that second time. So with each paper, you might need to make changes. I did want to note that. So this is the paper that I'm using and now that we've printed on it, it's time to take a look at the pressing process. So this is a two-step paper. So the printing is not the only thing you need to do if you want to put it on a textile. So let's take a look at the rest of that process. I preheated my press to 310 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, for at least a portion of this preheating process, you wanna have the press closed. You wanna have the press closed at least five minutes at the 310 degrees Fahrenheit so that the bottom platen heats up as well as the top. This will increase your rate of success with this product. Once you're ready to add that adhesive sheet, you're gonna open the press, place it down a piece of butcher paper, press down the print, print side up, Put the adhesive sheet down, and this needs to be adhesive side down. That adhesive sheet does have a yellow printed liner, so you can tell which side is which. Then I like to cover with butcher paper. Then close your press. You wanna press it at 310 degrees Fahrenheit for 120 seconds with medium pressure. Once it's done, go ahead and open the press, and while everything is hot, rub the sheet with a piece of some kind of textile. I used the shirt that I was gonna press this on and rub it for about five seconds and then leave it on that bottom platen. So you want everything to stay hot during this entire process. Peel the adhesive sheet away from your paper diagonally. One slow, low, and fluid motion. Now you might go a little bit slower at the end, just kind of let your adhesive sheet fall off. You should be able to see on the adhesive sheet that the adhesive is being removed and it's on your toner print at this point. Then you wanna use some scissors and trim around the edges. The edges of the adhesive sheet can often leave a straight line and you don't want that transferring to your shirt. Then you're gonna place the garment in the press. I go ahead and preheat my garment for about 10 seconds, starts that heating process, gets out any moisture, any wrinkles. Then add the print that has had that adhesive added to it. Cover with something like butcher paper and press the garment. I am pressing at 310 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 seconds with a medium high pressure. Now these pressing times are for the material I'm using, which is cotton. If you're using a different material, there are different pressing instructions with the eye color paper. Once that pressing time is up, open the press and remove the garment. The garment needs to completely cool before you peel this back. So you can use a DTF cooling block to help that process along, but allow it to cool completely. I peel it back on itself and I peel it back diagonally. One smooth, continuous motion works best. Once you're done peeling back, you might notice that the surface looks very shiny on your textile. That is because you need a post press to make this look as good as possible. So we are going to add it back to the press and I'm using an eye color T-seal sheet in order to get a matte finish. I'm repressing at 310 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 seconds and then open the press and wait about 10 seconds before removing that T-seal sheet. Remove it slowly in one smooth continuous motion. And while the garment is still hot, you can lightly stretch it before removing it from the heat press. 
Once you've done that, your project is complete. And then you can see those results and see that you get that gorgeous matte finish. It doesn't look shiny anymore. And you can see that white. So I put this design on a dark color shirt for a reason because I wanted you to see that you will get white out of this process and that white does transfer beautifully even to darker color garments. Now this printer, of course, it is just a regular printer so you can print regular pages on it. And when you add that white toner cartridge into the printer, you can print on regular paper. However, you wouldn't want to print on white paper because white would not show up. But here I'm printing on both brown and black paper to get a better idea of how this will look to give me some more options to use with this toner cartridge. And here you can see those results. Now on the craft paper, the white toner looked amazing. I loved it on this craft paper piece. The black did leave some streaks. However, this is a pretty thick piece of black cardstock. It was all I had. You may do better if you can find some thinner black paper to run through the printer. However, do be aware that you could have some issues with the toner itself sort of smearing on the darker colors. But overall, I'm in love with the options for actually printing with white with this printer. So now you've seen that you can use the Absolute White Toner Cartridge to sort of make your own white toner printer to give white toner printing a try. So if you've ever wanted to try this method for garment decorations or to decorate other surfaces and you're thinking a white toner printer is so expensive, you might give this product a try. Now let's go through like the pros and cons of using the Absolute White versus buying a traditional white toner printer. So the pros with this are obviously cost. This is gonna be way less costly than purchasing a traditional white toner printer. So that is one huge benefit. It allows you to get into this type of craft at a way lower price point. Then the next pro is you get to print with white. No matter if you're printing on something like these eye color two-step sheets to put onto textiles, or if you're printing on craft paper for a wedding invitation or something and you want to print with white ink, this is the pro of this. You get to print with white ink and it is very simple. That is my next pro. It's very simple to change out your black cartridge for a white and then anytime you print black, this printer will print white because it has the white toner cartridge installed. And it is as simple as pulling one out and putting the next in. Then my final pro is that the RIP software is very easy to use. You may feel slightly intimidated. I'm gonna have to break this image up into different colors versus the white and the overprinting and under, under and then overprinting, underprinting, like all these terms, but it is a very simple software to use. Just a few buttons and you will be printing gorgeous images with the addition of white toner. Now, some of the cons. You'll probably have to play with your printer some. You're printing on this twice if you're using this eye color two-step paper where you want the white to fully print over that back. So you're printing on it twice, you might have alignment issues. You have to play with that alignment, bump it one way or the other to try to get everything to line up. You might have to play with your colors. You might have to play with bumping the white up, removing some of the white. You might have to play with all of that to get the exact look that you want. Anytime that you sort of hack a printer or convert a printer, you can run into issues. And those hacks are going to be very dependent on the brand and even model of printer that you have. So I have this Canon printer here, and it may not be the same adjustments that you would need to make to your Canon printer. So if you've ever talked about a sublimation printer conversion, you might hear people talking about this type of issue. It's going to be the same with this printer conversion. You just might have issues that you will have to experiment on your own and dial in a process that works exactly right for you. Whereas if you purchase a white toner printer, then all those little things are going to be fixed for you. You only have to print once. It prints all of the five colors at once. The C, M, Y, K, and white it prints all of that at once. You don't have to worry about that. They've already taken sort of the guesswork out of it and dialed in those colors for you. So a lot of the guesswork is taken out of it when you spend the additional money. But if you can't afford it, and this printer conversion is what you're gonna to need to do, then you might have to put some extra effort into the experimentation behind it and experimenting and finding exactly what will work with this toner cartridge and the specific printer that you choose to use with it. I feel like the only other con I had is that sometimes, and I showed you on the black cardstock, sometimes when I ran it through, some of the toner sort of picked up and smeared. That happened to me once on the black cardstock and once when I was printing on one of the clear film sheets. Now, it could have just been like my specific printer, the brand and model as far as the way it picks up and the way it drags through the printer. 
or it could have been something else that I was doing as far as loading the paper. So it could have been a user error issue, but I did want to note that I had that issue a couple times. Then the final con that I'm going to mention is that when you print twice with this, you have to remember to change out the black cartridge and put the white cartridge in. And I am saying this con because I forgot a few times. I would forget to change it out. I would go ahead and print my second sheet and then it would be, I was printing black again when I meant to print white. So yes, I messed up a few times and forgot basically to change out the cartridge. So you have to know if you have black or white in the printer and which one you need at that specific time. And then just printing twice would be a con. So it's going to take you longer. Not even take into account the alignment issues. It is going to take you longer for each print that you print. Now, printing with this is fairly fast. The printing itself is very quick. It prints out very quickly. However, this particular printer, when I changed the cartridges out, it went through a few cycles before it would allow me to print a second time. Sometimes it was pretty long in between those cycles. So if you were just printing like one of this design, it might take you a while to print it because you would need to print twice and you would need to wait for the printer to do its thing once you pull out one cartridge and add the other cartridge in. So all in all, those were my cons. However, this Absolute White toner cartridge did work great in my experience. And frankly, if you wanted to give white toner printing a try and you've never thought you were gonna be able to afford it before, this might be the way to do it. Now, maintenance for this printer, as with any laser toner printer, is none. There is no maintenance. So you can unplug this and leave it sitting for months, plug it back up, and it is going to print fine. Because this is a toner-based printer, there's really nothing to clog. There's nothing to maintain. So while the toner itself, like the toner cartridges, might be expensive, they do print lots of prints, and there's no maintenance and no worry when you have a laser printer. So if you have a laser printer at home, and when you add on the absolute white, that's an option. Or look into purchasing a home laser printer and adding out the absolute white for the addition of that white toner, the ability to print white, the ability to make cute shirts with white ink on a dark surface. So I think you're really gonna like this one and you've been asking me for budget-friendly options for this type of like DTF printing, white toner printing, and I feel like this is one of those budget-friendly options that you could do at home. So if you have any questions about Absolute White or anything that I covered in this video, drop down in the comment section, ask away. If you liked this video and it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.